and say, my life has been changed. It's usually someone who's done a whole lot of living. Tiana Bray says her life was changed this summer during a missions trip to Africa. Tiana, you don't mind me asking how old you are? I'm 14. Grade nine. Yeah. An, um, an amazing summer adventure. You need to stand up because everybody's going to be trying to see this stunning outfit. Just, uh, this is Zambian dress. And I know that this is a typical way of thanking those who come to uh, help and uh, made just for you. And it's just gorgeous, two pieces. And um, you'll have lots of opportunity to wear that. It's you. Come and have a seat and tell us what ever ignited your heart for Africa. Well, I've been in a foster child since I was two, so I sort of understand the fact of not having parents around all the time and so I wanted to go to Africa just to see how everyone else is without having a parent and of course so it's worse. So many orphans there. Yeah, there's yeah. so many orphans and then there's double orphans and that's definitely hard. So you, of course, the vision light offices are right here in the Crossroads Center yeah. and how did you find out about, wow, that's an arm of vision light, women for orphans and widows? Yeah, well, since my dad is the producer, we, he and Sharon, I guess, met somewhere, and so um, it's always been my thing to go to Africa. Last year in October, when I wanted, we were going to go with Rita and Rita my, Prins is the executive yes. director of Wow. Yes, so that's how we got it all sorted out. And then my mom was like, "Well, when you're 14, we'll think about it." So it was my 14th birthday present going to Africa. Oh, I mean, that is a wow. So young, and I mean, you weren't alone. We'll see a picture here of the group of 23 uh, that did go. And you know what surprised me? Sharon Roberts was telling me how many teenagers were on this trip. Yes. Lots of them. Now, were you at the youngest? No, there was another one who was younger than me, but we were both 14. You were both 14. Yes. That's a big deal, leaving mom and dad and going so far away. I mean, some people think it's life-threatening just to go to Africa, and yes. that's a little bizarre. But um, did you know what you were in for? Did you know what was going to be expected of you? Um, well, I, I didn't really realize the fact that there was a lot that would go, go on there. And when I got there, it was sort of a culture shock because... Mm -hmm. When you're there, you don't really think that there's that many like homeless people there, but there's a lot of people homeless trying to make a, a dollar. Mm -hmm. Of course, WOW is all about community transformation, yeah. supplying whatever is most needed, education, medicine, uh, food security. Uh, we'll see some of what you got up to uh, as we look at your pictures. I know you've had to select from a whole lot with Dad's help. <laughs> Here are some of the children. Now, I have a report from Sharon saying that you were a huge hit in community, especially with the children. They just loved you. Yes. And with How this could picture. you not love them? Who's this? Yeah. Um, th these are actually siblings, and they have to take care of each other, or the dying grandmother takes care of them. So it's difficult for them to go on. Of course, most of the parents have died of AIDS. Yes. And so that's just a common scenario. Is this a member of the team? Yeah, the one in the middle is Karen. She's a member of the team, and there we are bringing maize to the dying and sick people. Mm -hmm. Now that's the home-based care, yes. and it's actually Cobway home-based care that you were working with. Yes. So you actually joined the teams to go into these homes and minister to the sick and dying. Yes. Oh, here's one of your fans. <laughs> what? Let your dreams take flight. Now. Uh, 70, 70 languages in Zambia, 50% of the population speak Bemba. Were you able to communicate, just hold that picture for a second folks, uh, were you able to communicate with the children? Yeah, um, we learned how to say hi, which is Munashani, in that, and then they'll reply back and say Brino, which is good. Uh -huh. So it's like a greeting. And, and the rest is just love in action, yeah. isn't it? Now, if we go back to this picture we left, uh, have you painted something before? No. <laughs> I, think, I think the locals wanted to get involved with you here. Everybody wanted yeah. to paint. Yes, the, the locals will come up to you and be like, are you tired? And if you say no, they'll make sure that you say yes so that they can just be part of painting their own school. And w oh, it's a school. Okay. Yes. What's happening here? Um, before we left, we came up with a bunch of school supplies, and then we would hand it out to them. and. 
if you saw the parents, they were more excited about the school supplies than the kids were because then the parents could see that their kids would have a brighter future. Uniform school supplies. Yes. I think I know what this is, but you tell me. Um, we would take pictures of the sick people by, permitted by them and then we would go back and make it into a pretty book, a memory book. And um, it's their most prized possession because like, they would never see themselves because they don't have a mirror or a camera. So when they see themselves, it's very awesome for them. And these memory books are often done for dying mothers yes. um, a, a, with the dying mother pictured so that the children will have that uh, after mom's gone. It's, it's, it's very uh, distressing but very meaningful at the same time. It's a wonderful, wonderful ministry. What did you enjoy the most? Um, I enjoyed painting the school. I thought that was like amazing. Or the Christmas parties we did. Yeah, so. two Christmas parties. Yes. They don't care what season it is, do they? <laughs> no, they don't. And I just loved like handing out the school supplies and the uniforms and the food just to see their smile. Like it was so amazing, just their smile. Now, why was this so life impacting for you, Tiana? How are you different because of 20 days in Africa? Well, the whole reason why I wanted to go mainly was because I wanted to get the feeling because normally w I would see my friends and I'd want to be like, well, I want a cell phone now because they have it. But really go going there really changed because you saw poverty at the worst. So I think I can't believe I actually, I feel guilty because I can't believe I actually wanted something even though I lack nothing and they, l and they don't have what they need and I have the nerve to say I want a cell phone. So you think your desires have changed yes. because of what you've seen? Yes. Yes. Something we didn't see in the pictures is that you became very sick and had to go to the hospital. And I can't imagine someone your age being in that much distress, far from home and mom and dad. Especially when we couldn't reach my mom. Oh! We tried like six times and we couldn't reach her. So we had to go to the hospital without her knowing because we couldn't reach her. And that was difficult. That's when you really need to rely on God. Like, you don't know what's going to happen next. So you need to really ask God for help and help you through that. Well, Sharon Roberts, who, by the way, was in Atlanta this weekend for the 80th birthday for Dr. Charles Stanley, said that she teared up every night at debriefing because of the spiritual growth she saw, particularly in you young people. So you are to be commended. A brave, bold adventure, uh, sickness and all. And has it, has it put a different light on your own journey? As you said, you know, a foster child from the age of two, adopted into a wonderful Christian family, yes. which has led to your being adopted into God's eternal family. Uh, you were able, I'm sure, to bring that hope to those children. Yes, I got to talk with this one girl and her family was just wrecked and she couldn't do much. And so I just shared my story and that just really helped her through. So I was glad to be able to do that. I hope you get to do this presentation at school, do you? Um, I did in my English class. We had to write an assignment about the best thing ever and that's what I wrote about. Wow, an amazing summer vacation. Well, um, that one of the men, of course, the man, the executive director of Cobway Home Based Care is Pastor Eric Mombello. He has been on this program. He's kind of an unforgettable guy. How did you enjoy him? He was fun. He was, uh, he was always happy. Like, he would always see a smile on his face and then just leaving was awful because you had to, like, say goodbye. I hate saying goodbyes, especially mm. to people you really connect to. Do you think you'll go back? Yes. I know I will go back. Is that anywhere in, in life goal here? I'll be back next year. I know Really? So. Have you heard about that dad on the, okay, you get a shot of Bill there, he's having a meltdown. No, he's not. <laughs> you must have heard this. Uh, here's, uh, here's our Compass Magazine this month. There's Pastor Eric. Uh, more stories uh, out of Cobway in this issue. Very much on theme, um, love in action this month. Here's what uh, Pastor Eric said at the conclusion of a conference in Chingola in Zambia. He said, I pray that our churches are solutions centers. If people are sick, they are healed. If they are hungry, they are fed. If they are depressed, they are encouraged. I want you to remember five points I will leave with you today. Number one, 
live for others. Number two, live for others. Number three, live for others. Number four, live for others. Number five, live for others. That others focus has changed the way you see your world back here in Canada, Tiana. And that's what we hope for everyone who takes a short-term missions trip. And we want to say that if you're a young person, you don't even have to be a young person. I think there's an age uh, limit though here. Take a look. We have uh, an information page in case you or someone you know might like to do an adventure like this. Uh, while missions trips are planned, April 18th to May 8th, 2013, and August 1 to 21 next year, um, males can go too. I hope you noted that there were men on this trip. Children under 18 do need to be accompanied by a guardian and they would love to hear from you at visionled.com. Tiana, thank you for this marvelous, inspiring show and tell today. Thank you.